Welcome back to Off the Cuff. I'm your host, Daniel Priori, and I'm joined by the very talented Chris Cruz, writer extraordinaire. Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. How about you? I'm doing well. So I have to ask you about your first name, K-R-I-S, right? Yes. Who's the better Chris, you or Chris Jenner? Definitely Chris Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. You got to say you. You got to say you. Has has Chris Jenner's rise to stardom made your name feel like a... Like a like, have people asked if you named after Chris Jenner? No, but people do ask, like, what's Chris short for? And I'm always like, well, Kristen. And I'm like, oh, well, dang, Kristen Jenner. And she's supposed to name the exact same way. So, oh, I didn't I like you know what? counts. Yeah. I never really thought about that, that her name is Kristen. Yeah. Good for her. Well, if she could just <laughs> lend us like a quarter of her money, you know, I think we, she'd could, be okay. we, we could write all the books we want. Right. She wouldn't even miss it, I don't think. No, but she, no, she, I don't want to count her money, you know? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> It, who, who would who would at this who point? would uh so listen you're from columbus ohio go mm-hmm. buckeyes um <laughs> yeah. and then you moved out to la speaking of chris Jenner, you moved out to la um did your writing uh before we get into your book mm-hmm. uh did your writing bring you to la was that like you i have to be in la to write or do you think that you could have done it from columbus i think i could have done it in Columbus still um because I've been writing like really in high school but then the more I wanted to think about my career and my life um and like writing in the spaces that I wanted to write in Ohio just like wasn't it wasn't it wasn't was a slap in the same yeah, yeah yeah it wasn't and after like having an internship in LA like during my undergrad um I was like yeah I think I should be here I think there's more opportunities and Thankfully, after moving, I was able to connect with a lot of great people who I can also call friends now, which has just been so awesome. That's the best when you can network and actually like the people. Isn't that nice? Right. Yeah. 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 A lot of people just network to network. But like, hey, if I can get a friend out of this is very good. Mm-hmm. So where did you do like the Huffington Post, uh, the MTV writing? Was that in L.A. or was that in New York? That was in Ohio still. So oh, wow. I they let you done... write from there. Good for them. Yeah. So I was writing for them um, when I was, I think, a junior in college and then my senior year I started picking up more with Huffington Post but then after graduation I kind of stopped and tried to figure out like what other writing could I maybe get into you know okay that's cool uh the other question is where'd you go to college okay so I did not go to Ohio did I offend you that's why I said (laughs) did I offend you no you did not offend me my sister my eldest sister um, went to the Ohio State. You always got to put the okay. in front of it. So I right. did that for her. In case Brutus Buckeye that. stuff everywhere. Yes. Yeah. But I went to Otterbein University, which is a small liberal arts school in Westerville, Ohio. So oh, cool. not many people know it, but people tend to know OSU or like Ohio University. Yeah. Once I see like Columbus, Ohio, I'm just like, you know, I, uh, I've bet on too many football games. Oh, oh. To, to, did, you, like, did you bet on the Michigan one? Uh, I did not. Okay. I did not. But Michigan's uh, in the college football final, so I'm sure no. Columbus is a little bit upset. They're a little salty, but yeah, you know. No, no, no. I, I picked. Uh, for, uh, I do another show. I actually picked Ohio State to win the national championship this year, and their quarterback to win the Heisman. So I I, I rode for Ohio State. This year. <laughs> I, did, I did. Now I'm paying for it. Uh, so you actually work with One on One Life as well. I do. How did you link up with these guys? So it's a funny story. I actually wrote for another company called Black Excellence, which just focuses on a lot of Black creatives, more people in the community doing work um, that is like touching communities. And so one of Corey and T. Drew's connects hit me up. um, I think it was for like PR. But she was like, hey, we have like this great company that we want to shed light on and we want to know if you want to write about them. And then I saw what one in life was doing. And I was like, you know, this is great. This is up my alley. I love mental health. I love these discussions and knowing that two black men were yeah. creating this um, was just really awesome to me. And so I wrote an article, like a feature on them. And then shortly after I started following the brand a little bit more and was like, I really want to see if I can get involved and see if I can hop on the team and, and write for them. And Corey was down for Auntie Drew. And then they're great That's dudes. All she wrote. Yeah. They're great dudes. I love those guys. Shout they out are. Corey and T. Drew. Fantastic. Uh, the CEOs of uh, our beautiful company over here, 101 Life. Uh, I, I honestly, I, I'm not saying it because, you know, they, 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 they write me a check. 
they're two of the nicest <laughs> people I've ever met in my life. No, for real. They're they're they are just two of the best people on earth walking around. I um, haven't even got to like meet them face to face. I'm hoping I can soon, but just like our when you're in New York, when you when you're in New York, absolutely hit us up. Yes. And, we'll, and we'll all hang out. Oh, um, I do that so bad. Absolutely. Um, so let's get into the book. Okay. Right? Let's get into it. Let's get into the book. You know, you owe it to yourself is the title of the book. Where did the idea of this book start? Did you have like a, an epiphany moment or was it something that kind of built over time? It kind of built over time because to be honest, like it wasn't on my radar at all. To write, so, a, to write a book at all? To, well, to write a book, yes. Because okay. I was actually writing a, a different project. Um, one that I had been writing actually since I was in my undergrad, but it was a little bit more serious and emotionally taxing. And so once lockdown came I was like I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna yeah. write this I'm gonna finish it I'm gonna be productive but then when you're looking at your walls 24 7 and you have no yeah. way to escape it's gonna turn into like a yeah it's gonna turn like into like an Ernest Hemingway novel right, yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just wasn't able to like just finish it and I I was kind of in a rut too because I was like I worked so hard to just like get to where I'm at with this project and now it kind of feels like I'm giving up but emotionally I was just like I can't I can't do this right now so I'm going to put it on the back burner and then kind of during that hiatus if you will of not writing um I still was trying to think of what I could create just to keep me sane were you like changing like your like daily activities during that time did you kind of have like a a lot of people did like a total reset like on their lives would you say that that's kind of what you did you kind of changed the way you looked at stuff and uh maybe the way you even looked at writing yeah, because I think I was so focused on like, getting this project out that I was just like eliminating everything else that I needed to actually work on. Mm. And a lot of that was like some inner work as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That's the hardest part. Yeah. The, the inner work is the stuff we procrastinate the most on. Yes. For sure. And it just, I think that's why I couldn't finish it because there was just things that I kept avoiding. And all of that time, it was like, oh, you should have been like doing this work in the first place. Yeah. We're, so, we're, we also like yeah. to yell at ourselves a lot in our brains. Right. So, and like, I was doing like that all the time. This. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, I had to take a break from that. But then in the midst of that break, uh, I was journaling a lot more. Journaling has always been kind of like a, a form of therapy for me, but I tell people I all write, the time on this show, journaling is very important. It's so important. It's I like so important. I can't and keep it, these thoughts in my head. It has to come out. It's very tedious in the beginning. Like I, I've told them, I said, you know, some days you'll forget, but that's all right. Like, don't yeah. just just catch up and just start from that day. Don't like give up on it. When uh, I went through. Um, so when I went through like my kind of like nervous breakdown, it, yeah. I mean, it was a full blown nervous breakdown, but uh, <laughs> I, I just started writing. I started writing yeah. a lot and it actually helped me. Um, so I always stress how important journaling is. So I'm proud of you. I'm proud well, thank of you. you. It, yes. it takes some time. To, it does take a, a while to actually get in the mood to journal. For sure. Because this past year, I was, I've experienced anxiety a lot. I think mm -hmm. over the course of, you know, my teenage years and going into adulthood, I definitely have anxiety, but I've now been able to place like a name for it right, right. or like call it what it is. But this past year alone, I was just like struggling so much with anxiety and my rough. I would have panic attacks, which was very new for me. Um, it's the worst, isn't it? It was it was terrible. I was yeah. like, I can't function. I can't do anything. Yep. And I have so, panic disorder, so I know I know it very so well. So you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's very yeah. drawing. It's yeah. very <laughs> I always did like describe it too to like people that don't understand like with like what exactly yeah. a panic attack is. I'm like, well, it's I give them the scientific, like it's your overreaction, it's like a tick in your fight or flight mm -hmm. uh but after it it feels like you fought 10 people at once yes you're exhausted you're done you're done so people i try to get people to understand that your body's so active and it's going through so many physiological things that your brain kind of just like shuts down after you No, it does yeah it does you're just like you kind of for lack of better words you just succumb to it in a way at least yeah. that's how it was for me like i just felt very like debilitated and it adds to other stuff like yeah. that adds to depression and it all rolls into like this horrible mess so it's like it it's does. nice to like identify it i'm happy that you were able to do that yeah and through therapy of course too they're talking to my therapist i was like i don't know what is up with me i don't know what's wrong like i feel like i have to place 
a certain reason for this, even though sometimes there's not like a oh, specific yeah. reason, you know? Oh, yeah. Did you go to the emergency room at all? I didn't. It wasn't oh, to the I point went, where like, I had to do that, but I went so many times. Really? Yeah. So I went like maybe like 12 nights in a row. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So this is when it was really bad. And I told the doctors, I said, listen, I need to know that there's nothing wrong with my brain, mm -hmm. my heart, my lungs, uh, my stomach. Once I find out that nothing is going on in there and you guys mm -hmm. are like, I'm good. And then I'm like, I have to tackle this a different way. Because right. I kept thinking like, no, it's definitely my heart or uh, no, it's definitely my brain. Like yeah. I have some kind of mass on my brain. Like I would stay up at night thinking of this. Just fixating on it. Fixating Google, Dr. Google doing all this. Oh, my stuff. goodness. So, WebMD. Yeah. So. Again, I don't recommend doing that if you don't have insurance because it cost me about seventy thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, they're never getting it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but but you know, for me, once I found out, like like what you were saying, once I found out that I was actually like, okay, this is mental. I had to switch mm -hmm. my entire approach, which I was not accustomed to doing at all. Yeah, because you think. Well, I don't want to speak for everybody, but for me, especially before the pandemic, I think I was just doing a lot of things because my mind was on autopilot and it felt mm. normal. And so then when you are in a state where you can't see anybody, can't do anything, you're still working from home or you're run down and you just have to do that every day, you realize that that's not a way that you can operate. Right. And for me, it was like a wake up call. Like I've been operating under these circumstances for so long that now I'm starting to see like, okay this actually isn't healthy. This isn't productive for me. And now my brain is finally trying to tell me like, girl, get some help. Yeah. Like, you can't do this. It's the golden moment. I really do say it. It's like, listen, when, when you could finally um, recognize that you can't do it on your own, it's like yep. a beautiful moment. It's, it's not a weak moment. It's a beautiful moment to me. Yes. Which so is what, when you were in like therapy, were you think, were you still writing this previous book? No, I had, I told my therapist too. I was like, is it? Cause I guess I should backtrack a little bit. I really yeah. struggle with um, putting a lot of emphasis on my work and productivity right. which then kind of plays into like how I feel I'm worth. Um, and so I was telling her like, if I don't finish this, it's going to be the end of the world. Like in my mind, people were counting on me, even though no one knew I was even writing this, but right. it was like, for me, I had made this commitment. People had backed me financially and just with their time of like encouragement and words. So I, was yeah, like, I it, can't give up, you know? Yeah. It weighs, it weighs on you. It does. Yeah. And then she was like, well, how about you take a step back and then you write something and focus on something that is a little bit more liberating for you and makes you feel a little bit less, um, <laughs> emotionally drained right, and taxed. Right. And so I was like, well, I don't know what that is. Like, I just don't know what I could possibly do. But then somehow it was after a conversation I had with a friend. Um, we were having one of our mini Zoom dates because we couldn't see each other. Yep, but I, I was just like, I don't know what's next. I I mean, everyone is probably thinking that, you know. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I was like, I just don't know what I want to do with writing like where I see myself and then we like talked a bit and then after we hung up the phone I just like went to my journal which I had been struggling to do anyways but then I was like I feel like I have more to say and I remember I wrote down a quote and that quote was silly of me to be afraid of the end when I haven't even started and that was just like that's a nice one Thank you. That's a nice one. <laughs> that was just like something that like opened up this whole new form of writing for me because it was able, it allowed me to admit how I was feeling and admit that fear, but then also not like live in that fear. And yeah. Like, I mean, I validated that for myself. See the, a quote like that. It's like, that's even something for me. Like when I was a kid, uh, even like in high school, like I would be afraid to apply myself because I didn't want people to think I was stupid. Yeah. You know? So mm -hmm. I wouldn't even try at, yeah. at, at times. And then when I would try the doctor, uh, the doctors, the, uh, the teachers would be like, dude, why don't you just like try more? Right. Like, you're actually not that stupid. And I was just <laughs> like, yeah, no, I was like, no, I know. I just, you know, it's, uh, you know, I felt a lot of um, what you're saying. Like, uh, you know, a lot of times when you write stuff down physically, it, you see it from a different 
uh, uh, perspective. So like if I yeah, have dark, it, you know, if I have like bad thoughts, I'll say them out loud and I'll just be like, oh, that kind of sounds ridiculous. Right. Like, no, I'll, like, I'll, I'll do that. You know, and I'm just like, oh, OK, you know what? If I let that stay in my head, it might have yeah. affected the rest of my day. But now that I said it out loud and realized, like, oh, all right, that's kind of ridiculous. Right. It actually it helps. Makes you, it also helps you realize that not everything that you think is true. Yes. I definitely fixate on the idea of like if I have this thought that that means that it's final, it's the end. And yes. that something is like wrong with me. We're like the all knowing yeah. being because you, you want to know what it is for lack of better word. It's. Uh, our brain is kind of like the God of our body. Right. Right. So it's like, uh, once it sends something out into the universe, maybe the first time it doesn't get picked up, but I always say too, it's like, especially with like self-deprecating stuff, your brain doesn't know that really, if you're joking or not. (laughs) So at some point your brain is going to actually start to believe Mm -hmm. these things that you're saying or thinking. Yeah. Once you put it out and you realize this is not how I want to think about myself, you br- you can rewire your brain a little bit. You can. And you can also think about like when you say those things, once you write it out, you can also then kind of like, it's like a parent and then the child. And you're like, well, I think this because of this. And like yes. you start to make sense of the madness a little bit. And then you realize, yes. well, I have these thoughts because of something that probably happened to me as a child or what I've internalized. And you can kind of figure out sometimes a solution for it yeah you could build off of it also it's something that you could share with your therapist as well but right. like and also it's like what does the brain have like 30 million thoughts a day or something like something, something ridiculous some, something astronomically high so for me if you could actually pinpoint one and be blessed enough to write it down right you're doing better than what you think you are yeah at that point. yeah yeah you're doing better than what you think you are just to get one out of like this 30 million i'm sure it's even more but, uh, you know, but, it's, it's, it's too much. It's a party up there. It's too many people there. It really is. Sometimes it goes on for too long. I'm yes, like, that, right. that for sure. You only got to go home, but you can't yeah. stay here. <laughs> We're, we got to go to sleep now. So right. the title, you owe it to yourself. I always want to ask writers, do you come up with the title first or do you come up with like the body? So I came up with the body first. So like that, that quote that I wrote in my journal, that was like the start of it all, I started posting more quotes on Instagram and people were very receptive and were like, I feel the same way, which was kind of like nice for me to hear that I'm not alone in these thoughts. Yes. And so then I started writing um like what sh- personal- social media should be used for. Right. It's I used for nonsense. But yeah. if but if it's to be honest and see other people that you don't even know support you, you right. know, it's, it's even with the show. Like this show has helped a lot of people. Um and we don't know them personally. But, right, you know, is, just putting the content out there and being authentic, people will he, somebody if you change one person, it's, it's worth right. It. And that was so just like incredible to see like the feedback, because um, although I was doing it for myself, it was like, OK, now that I put this out there, I realize that other people need it, too. And so I started writing the copy for it. And then I worked with two of my friends. One was doing the copy editing and the other one did the design. And it wasn't until the end of the copy that like I had the title figured out because right, I kept right. thinking to myself like what am I going to call this like it has to be something good and that's I don't know how like it came the about, but... that's probably the har- harder than writing the book right in a way yes right because, like, it's like what do I want because this is the first right. thing everyone's going to see right because the book itself like the copy wasn't that hard to write in a sense of like like it's my life I know about it so I can obviously like talk about it right the it research like, is, I, is internal yeah, yeah how do I put this together in a way that is like, it flows well, that makes sense and it's easy to read. Yes. So that was like the the hard part. But then the title, I don't know, out of the blue one night, I was just, I think I was journaling again. And I think I said, I owe it to myself to be able to, you know, find rest and find grace and all these things that you give to other people so freely. And then I was like, wait a minute. Like, oh shit, I found the title of my book. I I think I found the title. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. yeah. I, I admire people honestly that there's there's like certain things right as a kid i would go into libraries and always be like wow like i'm very impressed that these many people sat down and wrote a book right you know and now like when i see people write a book especially in the era where reading i guess is like a little bit everyone's on their phone five minutes at a time when i see people that actually have the mental fortitude to sit their ass down and write a book. It's one of the most admirable things that that somebody can do because 
I feel like a piece of you is in every single one of those books that somebody buys, yes. right? And you have to stretch yourself to places that you didn't think you could go. And then it's super vulnerable to be like, here's my book. Yeah. Because people are the worst sometimes when yeah. it comes to sharing your art with people. Yes. So, yes. Th th you know, there's a moment of vulnerability. It's like, for me, if I ever wrote a book, it would be very hard for me to be like, oh, do I even want to put this out? Did you have moments like that? Like, I don't want to put this out. All the time. And even now that it's still out, I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe people are like reading my your words, right? Isn't that my crazy? words? Yeah, it's it's really nuts. Super dope. It's super dope. Uh, I have a, a one. I'm not the best writer in the world. So but it's also like I have a, an affinity for for people that actually write and complete yeah. books. And it's like, I, oh, I could see it on Amazon. I'm like, this is a real person. Right. Book. Right. Um, so what you come up for the title. So let's talk about the body a little bit. Yeah. You're talking about the uh, like the quoting the quotes from Instagram. Um, obviously, the, the research is personal, but did you do any exterior uh, research when you were writing the book? Um, a little bit, which thankfully, I am not a designer by trade or anything or like a mental health expert. Right. Yeah, me <laughs> too. I'm just, I'm just a dude with props. <laughs> but but I kind of I think a lot of the the inspiration that I took was from other journals that I was also writing in and that I have bought from other people so like it was any kind good of artist. Like, yeah I was like yeah. I don't want to necessarily copy this person's work but like having like a sense of like a format was super helpful yes so I kind of just like looked at some of the journals that I did have um and was like I think I could do this I've always wanted to create like a meditation guide or you know prompts if you will and um I kind of went from there and I think one of the biggest inspirations if we're talking about authors is Alex L um I don't know if you've heard of her before or not I'm, I'm not one of those people that lies and, and says you know <laughs> stuff about books so you're gonna have to put me on yeah she's a phenomenal um writer she does a lot of like self-help work um and a lot of her writing was very vulnerable and so that kind of like allowed me to step into that and also say like I could do this and I can share my story because I think there are so many things that we are afraid as people to share whether that's because how you're saying with judgment or sure. not being vulnerable enough but I don't know the more I thought about it I was like I this keeps going in my mind I keep thinking about doing this every single day so I feel like I need to do it and just let it go and be fine with that see again that's the other thing is people don't understand how and I'm going to speak up for myself for a second. People yeah. don't understand how hard it is to share so much of yourself with people. Mm -hmm. And then if somebody has a certain thing to say, it hurts. It hurts. It does. And it was something that I had to learn very early. So I've been doing like social media for like almost 10 years now. Right. So I had to realize like, listen, we can't let these things hurt our feelings at this point. Not everybody's going to love our work. No. Not everybody's going to love our work, but that's always something for me that sometimes I see people say stuff and I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. But I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you. You know what I mean? No, for but, real, for real. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I wish this guy wasn't right, but I'm, uh, I'm going to let him go. Right. But, you know, I think having that vulnerability to share something that's so personal, that, I think that's why people connect with this show. And I think that's why people will connect with your book is because if there's authenticity in it, People have a pretty good judge of what their their intake is these days in terms of, especially when yeah. they're trying to find something authentic. Um, for you, was there any like a uh, point in the writing where you're like, ah, maybe I should take this out. Maybe I maybe I don't want to do tell that story. Did you have that inner battle with yourself? Yeah, there was a lot of <laughs> there was a lot of moments where I was like I don't know if I should share that that might be a little too much right, and it right. also came down to like the times that I was writing some of these things like if I had a bad day or if like something was like on my mind and I went to go write about it I think I shared a little bit more than what I wanted to right and I'd have to like take a step back like the next day and be like, like oh, okay shit. yeah yeah, 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 yeah I was yeah. like I don't I don't know how I want to put all that in but I think there is some level of of boundary that I had to kind of um 
figure out of, For sure. okay, I want to share this, but also keep this part of my life private because I don't think yeah. everyone needs to know that, but Listen, just giving them the gist, you know? There's got to be a UO to yourself too, you know? Right. You, can't, you can't give it all out in the first one. Right. So when you're writing, did do you always try to be in the same frame of mind when you're writing or do you like, you know, uh, a, a, as artists, like sometimes like we'll go uh, out of our way to like put ourselves in like a sad mood to like see how like the work comes out. Did yeah. you mess around with any of that or did you try to just stay in the same frame of mind when you were when you were writing? It was uh, I would say it definitely fluctuated. Okay. I, I tried to stay in like the same like mind frame and, and, and mindset, but I think that it also was beneficial for me to not do that because I will say the times I was feeling like very sad and anxious was probably the most like raw that I was okay. writing it. But then I was able to like edit some of that and make it still raw, but right. I don't want to use appropriate because it's not inappropriate, but you know, like appropriate right, for right. The readers. Because I feel like when I try to filter myself too much or like stay in one particular setting, I'm not I'm not owing it to myself to like dig deeper into well, be a little bit more real. You're not challenging yourself. Yeah. You know, it's um. listen. I think the thing that sets people apart, um, whether it's writing, whether it's music, whether it's, um, you know, filmmaking, if you're willing to go a little further, but it's authentically further yeah that'll resonate with people mm -hmm. you know th there's a million self-help books uh self-help books that have been written probably in the last yeah what especially with the pandemic yeah you know a lot of people when you sit in meetings are like well what makes you different and i hate that question i'm so like i'm me motherfucker i'm me <laughs> that's, what makes, right. that's what makes me different <laughs> but it, it, it causes me to realize you know like sometimes when i am like creating stuff and i'm sure you go through this too it's Mm -hmm. How am I going to make this authentically me? But it's also like, I don't want to show everything because we still have to have some kind of security over ourselves, you know? We do. I think that was something that was really difficult for me as well. And something that I'm just now, like, I wouldn't say mastering, but getting more comfortable in, in my right. <laughs> mid twenties Yes, is when I was younger, whether that was like the school I went to or like my home life, I always felt like I had to have some kind of like, um, I guess the quorum for lack of better words of how I presented myself for sure and making sure that I was like polished and, and clean and always like in a good mood um, and I I realized that that's not always possible and so yeah. I think the same thing with writing is I can't always write from a happy place like it's not going to be that way like ever so I have to get oh, used yeah. to writing when I'm sad and when I'm angry or when I'm indifferent. Like, I think there has to be, there's a time and a place for all those things. Right. And then if you can actually put them on paper. Right. Um, why not? Why not do it? It's better you than know? anything else that you could be doing that's harming other people if you're letting out your emotions or seeing no, them sure. out in, in harmful ways. So For sure. And like I said, it just takes one person to resonate with it the way you meant for it to resonate with them. Right. Like, we're, we're, listen, we're, we're, we're all in this game. Uh, you know, people want to make a living. That's just the world we live in. Do. But but the thing is, it's really nice when you find that your book or your work or um, something you wrote, whether it was for the Huff Post or MTV or whatever, that it resonated with them. Yeah, that's what keeps us going as, as artists. You know what I mean? It, it, it does keep us going because it's like, you know what? It's slapping for somebody. So, you know, it means I'm doing right. something right. You know right. what I mean? And even if it's, even if it's not like doing it for somebody else or stopping for somebody else, it doesn't, I just also remember, it doesn't invalidate the work that I'm doing. Like right. how you said before, it's not going to touch everybody. But if someone has something negative to say, like, it's, it's still my work. It's still my experience. I'm not going to be like, you're right. I didn't oh, go yeah. that because you don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm going to have those ones where I'm like, oh. <laughs> Right. Oh, damn. That was yeah, hard. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I always ask this question and I always feel dumb when I ask it, but I'm going to ask it again. It's a safe space. It's a safe space. Um, when you write a book, do you have to start with the beginning? No, you don't. Cool. All well, right. I don't, like, I don't know do. if that's a dumb question. Like the author's going to be like, <laughs> I don't think you do. For me, it wasn't, I didn't have like 
a beginning. It was really understand. just like it, it's it stopped at MLA format for me. So, so you got <laughs> so you gotta stick with me here. I'm sorry if anything dumb comes out of my mouth. I was to make you feel better, I was terrible at MLA format. Like oh, so bad. I was awful. I was awful. Oh, um so, so there's hope. Shout out to anybody still using that. Right? But yeah, there's do, hope. Do, do you have to start with a, a beginning, a middle, and an end? No, for personally, I don't think you do. Um for me, the times that I am writing, it's just kind of like, I'll have a thought and I'll just go with it. And then once I get out everything that I feel like I need to get out, then I can do like the restructuring and be like, okay, this would make sense to go at the beginning mm. and maybe the middle and then the end. Okay. But I feel like I limit myself if I'm like, let me start from the very beginning. See, it's like, it's like when with songs, right? It's, it's, you could always add something. You can. So how did you know you were like, all right, I have to stop touching this book? <laughs> it took it took a long time for me to do that and to walk away and to be like, okay, it's it's over. Yeah. Um, but the the sign for me was when I felt like I had to add more because I just felt like I needed to have more beef or have more substance. Right. But then I looked at what I did have and I was like, no, this is more than enough. Right. So I'm not gonna try to force something because when I try to force it then I'm like, this doesn't really have too much attachment to me anymore. Got it. And I don't want that. I want it to be genuine. And I feel like the portions that I wrote in the book were very much that. And so I was like, I feel good about this. This feels like it's coming from a good place. So in the book, do you touch on your, on your childhood? Do you, do you touch on relationships? Do you touch on, uh, you know, the future, are these things that are all included in this book, or is that going to be uh, you owe it to yourself too? It might be uh, a second edition. Oh, I do, see, I do, I'm getting the breaking news on this show. <laughs> I do touch on just like work right. and stress and anxiety and parts of my life um, that I think have definitely affected me and are probably a root cause of my anxiety, right. whether I knew it or not. Um, but I think in the future, I do want to write another i don't know if it'll be like you owe it to yourself part two but something else right right we'll get more deeper. creative with the name we'll get yeah. More <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah like it's deeper into like more of i think my story and just like also well, what it's like being a, a black woman who right. has struggled with mental health and what that looks like uh like in the whole entire community because we all know that i wouldn't say we all know but no, um, that's why we have therapy this show. and mental health. Yeah, yeah, therapy and mental health in the black community. Not very um, accessible. Very taboo. Yeah, yeah. it's very taboo because yeah, people call taboo. you crazy, and then uh, you know, it's it's also the resources aren't there in some lower yeah. income uh, African American communities. So mm -hmm. it's something that you know, um, you know, even with, I always see. I've even had this this conversation with Corey and T. Drew. Like we've had the conversations where we sat down. I was like, dude, your day to day is just so different than mine. Right. It's just like this. It's just crazy. You know, I was yeah. like, you know, like the stuff like you have to go through or, you, you know, or the stuff that you've already gone through mm -hmm. is wild to, to me. It is. And like we were just getting into like a small conversation. We won't dive too deep into it. But like when we were talking, I was like, isn't it crazy that if I get pulled over and you get pulled over, we have to be a little it, it's completely different it's very different you know it's just the the experience is completely different but i could talk about th that's i could go off on a tangent about that i did that <laughs> right. that drives me crazy but um both. oh it was, oof. I, I, being a black female author now what does that mean to you because my italian puerto rican ass who is a male has no idea but what does that mean to you to have a published book as a black female author i was i was thinking about this the other day and just like reflecting on it because i i don't think i fully like grasp that i've written a book right and that it's like it's out there yeah but you're, su you're super millennial with it <laughs> I, I guess yeah. so yeah right but it's just like it's wild to me that it's it's out there and it also is just like it's huge for me because I know that I can't help everybody. Right. But the people that who are reading this and those who are like black women. Well, I'm sorry. Someone's calling me. No, it's all right. Um, I thought you were saying sorry for saying black women. I was like, no, I think that. Oh. 
<laughs> no, I, like, but, I, think, um, I think you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that people have it and are reading it and those who are or who identify as Black women, um, like part of their stories can also be told as well. Sure. And to know that like Black women's mental health is also very important because I think that we are called to be so strong and almost like kind of like the matrix of everything, right. like family and in friend groups. And so it's nice to be able to finally like admit that I struggle with these things as well and to not feel shame or to not necessarily look at, look at it as being weak, right? But just like human and to like be able to let that guard down. Cause it I takes feel like- a, It takes a lot yeah. of time. It does. Yeah. It's like chipping away at a piece of rock. It's like sooner or later, I'm going to get through this, but it's going to take a little while. It does. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think for me, it was also just like a milestone for my healing as well. Right. Of being able to tell myself like, okay, like these things happen to you or like you're experiencing these things, which are all valid, but there is also that light at the end of the tunnel and like right. a silver lining, I guess, to know that things will get better. I don't know, you know, sometimes it's hard to know when, Right. but this is kind of like my, like when I look back on, if I'm having a hard day, I can look back at this journal and be like, okay, I, I could I get through that. this. I did and that. I was able to write about yeah. it. And so I could get through whatever comes next. Right. But like you said, like, did you ever have like that epiphany moment? You're like, you know, obviously with how African-Americans have been treated in this country going back, you know, to slavery, obviously. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have that moment? Where you're like, yo, I'm a black woman. I wrote a fucking book, bro. Yeah. You, you know, like you're <laughs> like, yo, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's triumphs like that, that I hear from my friends in the African-American community, uh, African-American community, Jamaican-American community. Mm -hmm. When I hear, I'm just like, dude, you know how mad people probably are that you're right? out here winning you know what i'm saying winning that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's what i'm saying man it's just it's a triumph people got to understand that and you want to know what it is me being puerto rican and italian i face some racism uh oh i bet in inside my own family you know um you know so so i dealt with stuff like that but i mean it's it's apple it's it's not even close to what black people have gone through i'm just being honest um so when i see um it's inspirational to me this is what people got to understand black people move the culture dude they we do. do we do you know what i'm saying all my heroes are black dudes or black I love women that. you know what i'm saying michael jordan is it was, is a god to me an icon he's an icon, an icon a black man from the south I mean, he was born in Brooklyn, so we claim him like a little bit, but he was here for like three days and then he moved to North Carolina. I like, was like, wait, what I'm saying? I'm just saying, if you really go back, all the goats are black. They are. Literally like the blueprint. Yeah. So it, it's just, it's, it's, I just hope at some point you guys get your flowers. And it seems that you guys Thank are. You. you guys are. are. You guys are. It, no matter how long it takes, I really hope it does. You know yes. what I mean? You know, and this book was like me giving myself flowers too. Okay? Yeah, that's you took the words right out of my mouth. You deserve this. You deserve to be yeah. happy and to find that healing and to do what you got to do. And so this was like affirmation for me. And even that, like, regardless of your rate, we all owe that to ourselves. You do. To have a moment where it's like, you know what? I overcame all of this shit. Mm -hmm. I, I went through all of this and uh, I put this in my blood, sweat and tears for you. Yes. And hopefully it helps you get through what you're going through. Mm hmm. So now I am walking through a Barnes and Noble, right? Are those still around? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I get my books off Amazon and like a lot of them are coffee no, books. I, I get and it's you. Like, yeah. I'm reading a book on the Medici family right now. So like I, I read about like weird shit. Um, but I also have a couple of self-help books. Um, nice. there, there was a book called uh, Mastering of Your Anxiety and Panic written by David Barlow. Um, it's, oh, it's it's workbook related okay uh so you have to write it down uh i want you to check that My out favorite. but but i talk about him all the time we're talking about you today i'm walking through barnes and noble why should i pick up this book buy it take it home read it tweet about it instagram about it why should i you should buy it because one you owe it to yourself to take care of your mental health there we go and without your mental health and taking care of your emotional health like what do you have 
you don't have nothing to offer yourself or to anybody else. Right. So if you want to take some time to have alone time with yourself and to prioritize your needs and your wants and to rest, then this is the book for you. Chris Cruz, sell me this book. All right. You got four minutes left. Sell me this <laughs> book. Tell me again why I need this book. You need it because you're important. Your there mental health go. is important. Your emotional health is important. And you know what, Danny? What? When those things aren't taken care of, your physical health declines. Yes. So if you want to be healthy all around, you need this book. Okay. And to get to know yourself on a deeper level. Okay. All right. So uh, where can we find this book? So you can go to my Instagram. There's a link in my bio that will take you to my website where you okay. can find. And uh, um, yeah, read the website also so people uh, that are listening can hear it. So my website is www.chriscruz.com. Chris, K-R-I-S, Cruz, C-R-E-W-S.com. Okay. Yes. And then on the website, it'll take you to uh, the platform Lulu. Okay. Dot com. And then you'll be able to find you owe it to yourself. Listen Lulu, within the Lulu library. Lulu.com? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm buying a hardcover right now as we speak. Yes. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to write a review. I didn't, but I'm going to, I promise I'm going to read the book before I write a review. Thank you. I will. I will. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. We're at the cart. I don't want to dox myself and, uh, send out my, my information, but yes. I'll be picking up. A, uh, so here, why don't we do this? Okay. I'll pick up the book. I'll read the book. And then after I read the book, you come back on and then we could get a, a little more in depth. I would love that. Okay. And maybe by that time, I'll be in New York. Yeah. So if you're, well, you're in New York, we could do it in person. I love that. All right. But if I cry, you can't tell anybody. I won't. Like I said, it's a safe space. I'd be crying. And listen, there's nothing wrong. I have no. cried a lot more than I thought I would this year. And I always like to ask these people this question too. Are you happy? I am. Good. I am. It's a simple question. But you actually have to think about it first. It's second. simple, but it's also really hard because you, you have to think about like, well, what does being happy actually mean? Right. Like, do I have to be happy with everything in my life? Or if you're happy with one thing, is that enough? Uh, and I think that it, it, when I started to accept that every, not everything is going to go the way it's supposed to, but yeah. it shouldn't affect how I'm feeling about myself. It was, it, it, that went a long way for me. Um, listen. I could talk to you for two hours. You're a busy woman. You have things to do. Um, again, uh, it's chriscruz.com. Yes. All right. That's K R I S, like Chris Jenner. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How about like Chris Cruz? But uh, K R I S C R E W S dot com. Yes. Go ahead and get yourself a copy of You Owe It to Yourself because you owe it to yourself. Duh. Duh. Uh, Chris, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on, spending some time with me. Um, I will read the book. I promise you I will. And then when I'm done, we'll have you back on and we'll dive even deeper. Okay. Yes. I would love nothing more. Awesome. So, uh, just uh, let them know where they could find you on the internet. Obviously, chriscruz.com, um, your Instagram, wherever they could reach you. Instagram is miss M S Chris Cruz, K R I S C R E W S. Um, and then Twitter is Chris underscore Cruz. So that's where mm -hmm. I'm really at. That's where it is. Twitter is better than Instagram. I was going to say, you could probably see more of my humor on Twitter. Twitter is so. Twitter's way better than Instagram. Twitter's better. Instagram Twitter's better. fell off. It fell it's off. more entertaining. It's more entertaining. <laughs> but uh, again, writer, extraordinaire, black female author, yes. Chris Cruz, uh, the author of You Owe It To Yourself. Thank you so much for taking this time with me. Go do the rest of your work for the day. I appreciate it, guys. You could find us at one and one OTC on Instagram. Uh, you could find us uh, at one and one life.com. I'm sure Chris, you, uh, some of your stuff is probably up there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one and one life.com. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for spending your time with us again. Thank you, Chris, for spending your time with me. And we are out of here. Peace. Thank you, Danny. Thank you.